So I found this website where they pose difficult physics problem and I want to just go and solve them because it sounds pretty fun. I can leave a link in the description down below if you want to see the other physics problems or math problems that they have on there. They are aimed to be fairly difficult so I'm wondering if I could even solve this. I have yet to even look at the solution so as of now I do not know how to solve this. I mean from reading the question I kind of know what to do. I may have to refresh on some mathematical concepts that I've taken previously in other courses, but let's just solve this bad boy. So a ball is thrown at a speed V from a zero height on level ground. At what angle should it be thrown so that the distance traveled through the air is maximum? So what we have here is this flat ground, and we have some ball, and it's being thrown from the ground, and it's creating this trajectory that is parabolic, as we all know. What we want to do is actually maximize the length of this curve, not the distance from A to B. You want to maximize this whole curve. See, that's where the difficulty comes in, and I'm not sure how to solve this yet. I know there's going to have to be a derivative somewhere because you have to maximize something. So, so let me just derive this trajectory equation because I don't remember the physics equation. So let me just do that real quick. Okay, so I solved for the position equation in the vertical direction. So this is what we get, and that's pretty straightforward. I could just look this up, but this is just to get me started to conquer this massive beast. So this is the initial velocity in the vertical direction. So let's define an angle and define that initial velocity. So let's define this angle theta so we can find this initial velocity in the vertical direction. So that should be V. And then if I create a right triangle, so this will be V naught Y and V naught X. The initial velocity is in the vertical and X directions. And then this will be theta. Therefore, V sine theta will give you V naught Y. So I could plug that into our equation. So Y of T should give us negative G T squared plus V sine of theta times T. So this gives us the trajectory of the path, but this doesn't tell us anything how far the ball has traveled. So I believe what I vaguely remember in a multivariable calculus, you have to consult, you have to solve some sort of a line integral somehow. So I'm going to think about how to do that. So what I'm thinking is that we have to create some sort of parameterization so we get that line integral ready. And then we could take the derivative of the line integral and that should give us the maximum distance. X of t is v naught of x times t plus the initial position in the x direction, but that's zero. So we defined our coordinate system starting right here. So we can ignore those constants. Therefore, we have an x position, which is v cosine of theta times t. So now we have our position factor defined by time. So what we could say is that, okay, so if we got this, then how do you create this goddamn line integral? I know you have to create some parameterization. Okay, so if I want to find the length and I take the change of this position factor, that'll give us the rate of change of the length. So I believe if I take dr and integrate that over the curve, that should give me the integral of time. So I have to parameterize this correctly so that I'm doing the right curve. How do I do a line integral? I forgot how to do this. Uh, uh, maybe I could just plug it into my calculator. Okay, so if I have some three-dimensional space, right, and this is x, y, z. You gotta always remember your right hand rule. If we have some function that looks like this, okay, it lies somewhere in space, and I wanna compute a line integral on this curve that is defined on the x, y plane. So this is the arbitrary curve on the x, y plane that I wanna integrate over. That'll be this over here. So it should look something like this. And I wanna calculate the integral, which is just the area Area underneath this curve so if the function is of X and Y you know that's some arbitrary function that is not a vector we have to parameterize this path with respect to time so th I believe that's our position vector so if we have this going on I believe so this will be the origin we will define our position vector along there right so our position vectors are of T and if we want to take the integral of this what we do we do R of t dotted with ds that very small length along this path or actually it's not that you're integrating well i guess it is but really you're doing f of x of t times y of t dot ds 
and this is a vector now? Oh, I'm so close. I know I am. I just don't know how to do the line integral. <laughs> God damn it. Because <laughs> you have to convert ds into something else. I know that. And that's where you get that transformation factor. But how do you do it? Okay, let's try this again. So this is our curve that we want to integrate over. This is some curve C. And then we want to parameterize this. So we have some parameterization. That's R of T. And then that change in length is going to be our DS. Our DS can be viewed as a change in X and the change in Y. So if we have uh, DX squared plus DY squared all square rooted would be ds. So I believe if, to pr if we're dealing with the time domain, we just change these integrals to dt, and then we get this dt over here. So then what we could do is change this integral to a vector to our position function times this transformation factor, and then we multiply this by dt. And then we have to integrate this over that time period that matches with our curve. I believe that's where the numerical part comes in. That's what I'm thinking. Wait a second, there's a slight error here. We don't integrate the function r of t, we actually integrate the function of x and y, or y, I guess, and then we plug in the parameterization into that equation, and then we solve the integral based on t1 and then t2. So we have our parameterization, we need that function of x and y. Okay, so that should be fairly simple. So this is what we know so far. This line integral that theoretically calculates the length of the trajectory, and then the parameterization of the trajectory. So what we need to do is find this function of f, I believe. So it's just a parabola, right? So our function of f is really just a function of x, and it's just x squared. Or we could say it's just y equals x squared. So a parameterization or equation is just x of t squared. So is this all we need to know? So is f r of t simply just v squared cosine squared theta t squared? Now I'm looking back, like, I don't think this is the right parameterization. Like, why do I assume y equals x squared? Why am I assuming that? How do I not know it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c? Okay, so maybe there might be an issue here. <sighs> Okay, yeah, I think I was just being dumb. What I can do is solve for t and then plug into this equation. So I could say that x is v over cosine theta, which equals t, and then I plug it back into here, and now we get a function of y with respect to x, which is our f. So then our f function, so to speak, is simply... So now we could parameterize it and plug into this formula. Am I basically repeating myself? I am repeating myself. I'm getting stupid, aren't I? Or am I? I am. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. Wait. Well, I'm just going to do it because I already wasted time on this. Time's oh, I guess I'm not repeating myself because now this is just a function of time. Oh, this is... I am so confused right now. Wait, what am I doing? I'm plugging in x, so then... Okay, I guess I'll just find the derivatives with respect to time now, so x prime of t. Okay, now we can write our integral, hopefully. So that's the integral we have to solve, which, give us, which will give us the length with respect to theta. Then what we'll have to do is take the time derivative of this with respect to theta, and find the zeros, and, I'll, and then we have to determine whether those are maximums or minimums, and then we have our solution. But the problem now is that we need to figure out t1 to t2. Okay, so if we have some particle and it does a parabolic shape, we know that this, is, this time right here is t total divided by 2. And we know that the position at its, is at its highest right there, and it also traveled half the distance in the x direction. And we know the derivative is 0, at t total divided by 2. So the velocity at t is negative g t plus v sine theta. And if we plug in t total divided by 2, that should equal 0. We could solve for the total time. 2 over g v sine theta. So this is the total time it takes depending on the angle and velocity. So how do we parameterize that with respect to our function? I believe it's 1 to 1, so it should be from 0 to total t, but I'm not too sure. 
when I took multivariable calculus, it was like a year or two. It might have been two years from now. So this is like a, a really good refresher. Like, god damn. <laughs> okay, so let's think about this logically. So we want to parameterize this parabola from here to here. So yeah, our limits of integration would then just be from zero to t total, which is two, G, two over g v sine theta, right? Because we're integrating from time equals zero over here, and then t equals two over g v sine theta. That's how long it takes to get from here to here. So that should be our a limit of integration, zero from two over g v sine theta. I believe that's correct. So this is the goddamn integral that we have to solve. I believe it's just grunt work though. I guess I'll do all the algebra until I get stuck and I'll let you guys know. Okay, so I got to this point and it's very, very satisfying to see that this coefficient over here, this function, is inside this radical. So it looks like I could perform u substitution, but it's not exactly the same. So I'm wondering if I made some sort of calculation error. Somehow I forgot to get rid of these coefficients, this 2vg sine of theta. I don't know, maybe I could still perform u substitution. Yeah, so that doesn't look like it's gonna cancel out anything, unfortunately. I'm gonna check back my work and see if there is some sort of calculation error. Okay, I realize in the problem it says you will have to solve something numerically, or actually says numerically. <laughs> so maybe you have to solve this integral numerically. So I might have to write some program to solve this, unfortunately. But I wonder if there is a way to solve this. Maybe there is a way. So to solve this numerically, this is not the final step. Calculating this integral is not the final step. But when we do calculate this integral, this integral is just some function of theta. So then what we have to do after this step is take the derivative of theta and set it equal to zero and find those theta values. Okay, I believe you can solve this for theta. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. So let's say we have some function. So we'll say some function of f with respect to time and we're integrating it with respect to time and we're doing some integration since we have it from zero, we're gonna say zero. And then we're integrating it from some function of theta. So we'll just say, I guess, uh, theta or something. And then if we want to take the derivative of this function re with respect to theta, which will give us our function that we need, this, I believe, so if we do the antiderivative, we're going to get f of theta minus f of zero, right? And then if we take the derivative of this with respect to theta, that's just f prime of theta minus f of zero but this is just a constant so this is just zero so therefore we could say that this right here would then just be f of theta where we just plug theta into this function of t so therefore all we have to do if we want that derivative is just plug in this value into t and then we have our function with respect to theta okay i, be I believe that's how you could do this so theoretically, this will give you the length of the path, which is dependent on theta, and we're assuming v is constant, or the velocity is constant. So I'm going to clean this up and see what we can get. Okay, so this function of theta will give you the length of the trajectory. But that's not my main concern. What may, my main concern is this negative sign and length shouldn't be negative. But I believe the reason why it's negative is how I define the orientation of the path. So I vaguely remember something about orientation when it came to line integrals, I believe, or may maybe it was something else. But what I'm thinking is that if I did the integral going in this direction, you know, having the inside, you know, if you're walking along the path, the inside of the curve is to your left, that is considered a positive orientation. But when I did the math, when I drew this problem out, this parabola, I went from this way. So I believe I have a negative orientation. So I believe that's why this is negative. I get a negative answer. I didn't follow the correct orientation. So theoretically, I believe that this should just be a positive value. I'm already way too deep into this problem to like restart. It's already been like, what, an hour and 20 minutes? All right, I'm, people are probably gonna hate me for this, but I'm, a, I'm gonna say that this is just positive. <laughs> Since this is technically still a function of v, you have to take the partial derivative of f with respect to theta. And technically this will find the correct value, so to speak they'll determine the maximum length of the trajectory. So this is just a simple derivative maximum problem. So I believe this is the derivative of the trajectory or the length of the trajectory. 
So all we have to do now is set this whole thing equal to zero. So what I immediately see is that we could cancel out these thetas right here. Okay, so we have an equation that looks like this. So I'm just gonna multiply by this radical to both sides of the equation, and that should simplify a good bit. And we also could simplify this even further because we can multiply by g, and now we get something that's workable, where this equation is getting a lot simpler, thank god. This equation will determine all the angles that will maximize the trajectory. I believe we can do some long division here so we could simplify this even further. So I'm going to try that if, there, if that gets me anywhere. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not going to do any long division. So I'm going to say that the answer is going to be this. Any solutions that satisfy this. And now I believe this is where the numerical analysis takes part. So technically this is the answer to the problem. Hopefully, I don't know, it looks right, because it looks like it's a dimensionless answer within the function of sine, so that's a good sign. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay, so this is what we get when we plug in the equation. Okay, so this is a function of velocity, and the angle that we're trying to throw at. So the function is undefined when the velocity is less than 1, which makes sense, because then the angle is just greater than 90 degrees. So you're basically just throwing the ball vertically at 90 degrees when, when the velocity is 1, I guess. So what I'm going to do now is go over the solution to this problem. So these questions are from the Harvard University uh, of Physics, or the Department of Physics, and I chose this problem, problem 71. Okay, so let's just read this together. Let theta be the angle, blah blah blah, so that's just the equation. Okay, so they did do a line integral, but they didn't do that function of that parameterization. I don't know why. Okay, so I was on the right track. I don't understand why there's- Oh, because you're not integrating it with respect to a function. That makes sense. You're just finding the line integral, so what you're doing is multiplying by one. You're finding that length. Oh, uh, so when you solve the integral, perform u substitution. You solve the integral, plug in the limits of integration, double check, and then what you do is take the derivative of this and then set it equal to zero, and then it reduces to this. Finally, you can show that numerically the solution to this problem. See, now this is just a function of theta. How do they get rid of the, all those velocity terms? Velocity here, 2v squared, 2v squared. So there's still a velocity term here, but what happens here? You can verify that L equals zero. Oh, because this is v squared over g, v squared over g, and we're setting this equal to zero. Therefore, we can just multiply by that variable. So velocity is not dependent of this function. Okay, well, that makes sense. And then the equation simplifies to this, and then this is nonlinear, so you can't really solve this numeric, I mean, analytically. So then you plug this into your software, and then this is the path. Okay, well, I was on the right start. That's good to know. I wasted about two hours of my life. Uh, I'll see you later.